Next up in our line today with our Public Goods and Impact Summit, we're really excited to bring you Jordan from Web3 API. Jordan's going to be talking to us today about the Universal Web3 Integration Standard. Jordan, how are you today? I'm well. How are you? Awesome. Thanks. Really happy to be here. Happy to have you back. Yeah, thanks for having me. Welcome to the stage. Take it away. Cool. So let me go ahead and I'll share my screen. All right, so as you had just said, I'm here today to talk about this project called Web3 API. Um, it aims to be the universal integration standard for Web3. So first off, who is this person talking to? Um, my name is Jordan. I go by Dork Jelly and all the different platforms. Um, I have a history in working in a lot of closed source software and corporate software, and um, I left about two years ago and have been extremely happy ever since. I've been working with the Dior Collective, which is a dev shop that runs itself as a DAO. Um, and then out of that spun the Web3 API project, which I'll talk a bit more about why that actually makes sense. So for Dior, we've been working with lots of different Web3 startups and communities over the past two years. And through doing so, we noticed um, a very common problem that uh, persisted throughout all of them and kind of permeated the whole Web3 space. And so this problem is the integration problem. That's what we've been calling it. And so I'll walk you through what this integration problem is, and then I'll present to you the solution that Web3 API is to, to this problem. And so first off, um, in Web2, uh, we don't have this problem. What we do instead is we actually just uh, send a request to Web2 services that all have these public APIs. Um, applications remain very lightweight and they're able to integrate dozens um, or you know, uh, theoretically infinite number of APIs uh, seamlessly through these very simple um, REST interfaces, let's say, to, to these central servers. But the problem here is that um, all of the business logic, all of the logic that is doing things on your behalf is executing in these central servers. And so, you know, like uh, for instance, like Stripe is spending your money for you or tweet, uh, uh, Twitter is, is tweeting on your behalf. And so in Web3, we, we aim to solve that. And so how exactly do we solve that? Well, we instead do everything inside of the application. Um, all of that business logic that used to live in these central servers, it is now wrapped up into these SDKs, uh, most commonly JavaScript wrappers. And so these live inside of your app and it's doing things like uploading files to IPFS for you, um, or it's signing messages to send to the Ethereum network with your private key. And so this is um, great because it um, makes things more uh, uh, self-sovereign uh, self and, and, and you have to trust uh, less middlemen, but it comes with its own set of problems. And so I'll, I'll walk through those one by one to, to explain why this is not currently future-proof. So first off, um, JavaScript wrappers are not standardized. They're all architected differently. And if you wanted to build an app that composed multiple of them, um, it becomes very difficult. And so, for example, let's say you wanted to uh, com combine, let's say, Compound um, and Balancer and Uniswap and Aragon into a single application. Uh, you would be presented with lots of different problems of how to be able to use all of these JavaScript wrappers simultaneously. Uh, secondly, it is subscalable. So th there is an upper bound to composability when it comes to building apps in Web3. Uh, and this is because as you integrate new projects into your app, um, you have to add their SDK, which then bloats the size of your app. And so this is why, for example, um, lots of DeFi um, aggregation tools are now using central servers to be able to do the aggregation on behalf of the app, because the app just grows in size and it becomes way too big. Uh, JavaScript is slow and insecure. Um, this is something that's been discussed um, heavily in uh, you know, the, the computer science world, so I won't drill into it too much, but long story short, JavaScript is very slow, um, it's very insecure, and it leads to lots of, um, lots of exploits that can compromise user funds, which is very, very, um, very important to think about in uh, the world of Web3. And then the, the last part here is that it's not multi-platform. So in order to support many different use cases, you need to actually reauthor these SDKs in many different languages. And so a great example of this is if you look at the IPFS ecosystem, um, they've created, uh, I think, over half a dozen um, SDKs for the IPFS standard. And as they, you know, as they develop new things, they have to go and update all of those different SDKs. 
And so that um, it's, it, it's not very uh, time and uh, cost effective. And so integrating Web3 should be simple, right? Like it, it shouldn't be this difficult um, if we want to be able to reach escape velocity with Web3 integrating in, into many different applications. And so that's what this solution aims to do. Um, it is a, uh, a universal integration standard where um, all you have to do is just send these very simple requests to the Web3 API client and everything is handled for you. Um, and so the user interface as an app developer is the same as Web2, um, and we don't sacrifice decentralization as we do this. And so how do we do this? Like there's, there's some magic under the hood that, that's allowing this to be possible. And it really just comes down to the fact that WebAssembly is a new and emerging technology that's been worked on for the past like five, 10 years. And it's um, really changing how we build things. And so I'll, I'll talk a bit more about how this affects Web3 API. So instead of embedding these JavaScript wrappers, what we do instead is we embed the Web3 API client in your language of choice. So if you're building a JavaScript application, you add the Web3 API JavaScript client. And once the client is added, that's all you need to do. Um, you're able to send queries to any decentralized protocol using its, um, using its endpoint. So for example, api.uniswap.eth as an ENS domain. And then at runtime, what the client will do is it's going to download these WebAssembly modules that contain the business logic and execute them at runtime. And so what this allows you to do is um, not, uh, not bloat your application with all these different SDKs since they're being downloaded. Um, and it makes the user interface extremely simple because it's all through simple queries. And so we think that this is definitely 10 times better than JavaScript wrappers. It's multi-platform, so you only have to write it once and you can use it everywhere. Um, it's hyper composable. There's theoretically like an infinite um, number of, of uh, Web3 web APIs that you can um, add to your application without bloating it. Um, you're able to now build dynamic applications, which I'll talk about that in a second through these different standard interfaces. Um, and then lastly, it's faster and more secure. So here's a quick quote just for like some outside validation from the non Web3 space. This is from the founder of Docker basically saying that um, if WebAssembly had existed back in 2008 when they first created Docker, they wouldn't have needed Docker. Um, and so WebAssembly is a very great um, technology that, that solves a lot of problems in computing. So how do we actually go about integrating this? Um, you know, like we, we said it should be simple, but, but is it actually simple? And so here's showing you what it means to add Web3 API and, and use Web3 API in your applications. The first step is just simply installing the client. Um, you just, you know, if, if you're building a node application, npm install Web3 API client JS. And then the second step is to send a request to any available API. So, and, and it's really that simple. Um, you specify a URI. So here we have like api.aragon.eth on the left, where we're getting a list of proposals. And then on the right, we have uniswap.eth, where we're swapping something. And so uh, in order to build these Web3 APIs, um, this is kind of what the developer experience looks like. The first step is defining your schema. Uh, we use GraphQL as an interface definition language because it's very commonly used um, and it has great application support. Um, here we're defining the query module with a single method that has an argument with a custom type. And then on the right, uh, we have our WebAssembly module. And so this is currently being written in assembly script. So it looks a little bit like TypeScript. Um, and what we're doing is we're importing our types from our W3 folder. That's like our magic code generation folder that, that does a lot of stuff for you. And then now inside of your method where you write your business logic, you can put anything you want. And so this not only um, makes it easy to write these WASM modules, but it also makes it easy to um, compose and interact with outside dependencies. And so let's look at that. So in order to um, kind of utilize this, like, you know, as said, composability on steroids, all you have to do is um, import a API into your schema. And then um, inside of your WebAssembly code, you just import that API's type and you can now send a query to it. And so, you know, an, an example here is let's say we're building the, the Uniswap uh, Web3 API. We would be importing the Ethereum uh, package. And then now on the right here, we send a query to the Ethereum package. 
Um, and yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's only importing the schema. So it's, it's, it's not importing all of its business logic. So it, it still is fetching everything at, uh, at runtime. And so the, the other part that I'd like to touch on here is the fact that this allows you to create extendable standards. And so what this means is that just like for smart contracts, you can define um, like the ERC-20 standard. You can also do that for these Web3 APIs, where, for example, you could define a standard interface for um, voting. And so now um, what you can do is, is you can have an app that shows a voting interface and it could be using um, a, a voting Web3 API that implements a simple quorum, or maybe a voting Web3 API that implements some sort of uh, liquid democracy or something like that. And so it now allows your applications to become more dynamic um, without having them to manually update themselves and rebuild everything. You can also publish these Web3 APIs uh, uh, anywhere. And so currently, um, off the bat, we're supporting ENS and IPFS, um, but we've defined a standard interface for this API resolution uh, standard so that that way you can implement a Web3 API that does handshake protocol resolution or Rweave or 3box or a LEF. Um, and so, you know, like we're using Web3 API to build Web3 API, which, which is really powerful. And um, it allows outside people to permissionlessly uh, extend its capabilities, which is really cool. And at the bottom here, you can see some examples um, that are like a little more boring, I guess you could say, where you could send it to a central server, you could look it up in memory if you have embedded APIs, or you could um, load it from a file system. We here, like I, the, the point I want to make here is the fact that um, we support progressively migrating to this new standard. So we don't expect the world of JavaScript Web3 to be rewritten in a day. And so what, what we do instead is we support this concept of plugins, where you can take your existing JavaScript SDKs and you can then um, wrap them as a plugin and add that to the Web3 API client in whatever language you're building in. And so, you know, an, 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 example is, uh, an example of this is that we actually haven't implemented the Ethereum Web3 API in WebAssembly yet. We just use a, um, uh, we basically use a wrapper around Ethers JS. And so it, it allows us to move very quickly um, while building the tool chain, and it will allow users to move very quickly as they um, slowly migrate their things and make them cross-platform. So the, the main North Star that, that we're building up to here is this uh, Web3 Hub experience where you'll be able to uh, type in keywords like um, multi-sig or automated market maker or loans. And based off of that, you'll get results of different APIs that exist in Web3. And right inside of the Web3 Hub, you'll be able to interact and use those same protocols. Um, you know, for example, you could look up Uniswap and you could actually execute a swap in the Web3 Hub, or you could look up Aragon and you could look at your DAO's proposals or things like that. So in order to kind of draw this back to the Web2 um, comparables, uh, Web3 API is comparable to Docker as Web3 Hub is comparable to Docker Hub. Here are some commonly compared to projects that um, are commonly confused with us. Um, we're solving a very different problem that no one else is touching. And so that's kind of why we, we compare these with the Oracle solutions, with the blockchain caching, uh, caching solutions. And then we're a solution to this um, integration problem that I had just described. So our initial prototype was built at HackFS, which is an amazing um, validating experience. We won lots of, uh, uh, lots of awards from really great Web3 groups, which was very uh, validating for us. And then immediately after that, we got contacted to join the Gitcoin kernel program. And so that was kind of like our continued fostering support, which helped us further expand our network um, and be able to meet other, um, um, other projects in the space. Like it, it, it was a very, very uh, exciting uh, project um, and community that, that we're still involved with today. And then from that, we launched a, a, a Gitcoin campaign, which far and exceeded our expectations, where we um, gained a ton of community validation, just kind of showing that there's lots of people out there that are interested in the solution, which was very cool. Um, here's a list of our current launch partners. These are projects that we're partnered with that are very interested in using it as a first user. And we're working with them as, as we build out the, the, the solution. Um, on our website, you can see some um, different quotes from the launch partners themselves. 
talking about why this um, why this tool chain is so important to them. And lastly, we're running this all through a community governed DAO because we really do believe in community governed uh, community governed uh, community governed infrastructure. Sorry. And so, um, you know, like uh, coming from Dior, where we're a, we're a dev shop run as a DAO, like uh, a cooperative DAO, we very much wanted to use those same DAO first principles here. And it's, it's really paid off for us in the long run. And uh, it's, it, it's only going to grow and expand and further re represent the interested parties um, as we move, in, uh, move into the future. And so some stats on, on where we're currently at. We have around 60 members representing over uh, 20 different organizations. Uh, it's been active for around four and a half months. There's been over 100 proposals submitted, um, over 200,000 funds paid out to builders, and there's only more to come into the future. And so if you're interested in joining the DAO, being a part of the project in any way, uh, feel free to just check out this um, DAO one pager at dao.web3api.dev. Um, we're extremely interested with collaborating with anyone who's interested. Um, and... Uh, come and evolve to the next standard with us. We, we're really excited about this being a next phase for Web3 developers um, to try and help us reach that, that, um, that exit velocity um, so that any Web2 developer can, can come and integrate Web3 um, at the drop of a hat. So if you'd like to learn more information, please just feel free to visit our website um, and uh, feel free to contact me directly. So that's all I got. That was awesome, Jordan. Thank you. Cheers yeah. to Web3 API. Cheers <laughs> to the Gitcoin community showing up. You've got a ton of support for the DAO. That was awesome. Yeah, thanks so much. Yeah. Super <laughs> exciting to hear about. Is there anything yeah. else you want to tell the community before we take off today? Um, not too much. Uh, I would just say, like, uh, if you're thinking about jumping into Web3, if, if you're listening to this on, on your couch, um, you know, like not wanting to go back to your day job, I would say, um, please feel free to do so. There's there's tons of awesome opportunities here. Um, it'll welcome you with open arms. And um, just like the, the last presenter had said, um, make those calculated risks and uh, li live that life that, that's really representing your, your, your morals and your values. So, and I think that Web3 is a really great place to do that. I, I haven't found a better place. Yeah. That's awesome. I think, unfortunately, all know somebody who's hating their day job right now and would be liking to building the communities of the future. So Agreed. let's share this far and wide. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jordan. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye.